Good to have you join us again for dealing with parables for our times. Different object lessons are very, very important if you're trying to explain difficult concepts. When people have difficulty in explaining something, always look for an object that will actually help you. Now, many, many years ago, I went on a conference, and uh, it wasn't a religious conference at all. It was, in actual fact, uh, one dealing with motivation, dealing with business, and that type of thing. And I was sponsored by someone, and I went along. And the unfortunate thing is, I had to stay in the room with somebody else who I didn't know. And uh, they were in the same, same room as me, of course, they have their separate little bed, and I have my separate bed with my little lamp, etc. And they asked me what I, what I did. I explained to them I was a preacher. And then the person actually asked me a question about the Trinity. Now, in our previous talk, we actually have a look at the ecstatic, the egg illustration. So there I was. I mean, I couldn't get a boiled egg out to try to explain to the guy the Trinity. And I looked at the wardrobe, and hanging on the wardrobe was a clothes hanger. There we go. And that gave me a wonderful object lesson. Because if I'd use a sort of verbiage or verbal rhetoric, the guy would have had difficulty in understanding me. So I went and took the hanger. I took my jacket off and showed him the hanger. And I said to him, this hanger, how many hangers have we got here? He said, well, we've got the one hanger, right? The other hanger's up there, but what are you looking at? One hanger. But how many points to this hanger? There we go. One point, another point. Three different dimensions to this one hanger. Wonderful illustration again about the triune makeup of an individual. Body, soul, spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Designed and made in the very image of God. Many people say, well, oh, God must be an ugly person because when I look in the mirror and I'm made in his image, I'm not too good looking. So we can actually think that God looks like us. Well, when the Bible speaks of the image being made in the image of God, it's got to do with a lot of other characteristics. Getting back to the the hanger, I went on to explain to this guy that this point is not this point, and this point is not that point. So I've got A, I've got B, and I've got C. Now B is not C, and C is not, not A, and neither is AB. But yet, together, A, B, and C, they make up one triangle, one clothing hanger. Now when we refer to God, we must remember that often we try to think in terms of only either God the Father or God the Holy Spirit or God the Son, Jesus Christ. I know many, many fine Christians who are very sincere, who, who in actual fact pray to God the Father, then they pray to God the Son, then they pray to God the Holy Spirit. And I asked the one guy, why do you do that? He said, well, I don't want to offend God the Father by only speaking to the Holy Spirit. Now, that is crazy, but that's basing your reasoning on a human value or a human understanding. We need to understand, therefore, that when we speak to God, we are speaking to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The three of them don't do things independently of one another. If I should take away one of these points, this clothing hanger will collapse. It wouldn't be able to fulfill its purpose. And therefore, there are three parts to this hanger, as there are three parts to the very essence and the makeup of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Isn't that an incredible thought? And therefore, look for different objects. You don't need the egg. You don't need the shoes. You don't need a hanger. You can look for any object and turn it into a means of conversing at a level in which those that you are trying to share truths with will understand. And therefore, sometimes it's important that even when you speak to adults, you speak to them as if you are speaking to an innocent child. Now, you don't speak down to them to insult their intelligence, but sometimes the object lesson is going to remain with them in their minds a lot longer than words. Because with words, you hear it and you can forget it. But with an object lesson, you hear the lesson and you also see it. It has an audible and also a visual component that actually makes it entrenched within the person's mind. So by all means, if you're trying to share some of these great Bible parables and great truths of the scripture, look for object lessons that become a means to an end in sharing some wonderful truths with people. So once again, the clothing hanger says it all. 
And I trust that you would have learned through this object lesson something that will be beneficial in your conversation with those that you care for. Thank you very much. Thank you.